I broke the crown thingy off my statue and now I can't find it in this sea of grey. Why would I buy a grey carpet when all my models are grey? Maybe it's time to pay my miniatures. The amount of grey models I have is starting to become a problem. A hundred or so chaos orcs in here that would otherwise be a beautiful army. More of them here too. And my Nurgle army. And more Nurgle army. All bloody. I've always painted miniatures kind of wrong. Wrong colors, wrong techniques, wrong style. I worked out that I'd never be the best at painting, so I should just paint differently. I'm wearing a mask, especially because I use enamel paints. They dry really, really, really fast and they have awesome coverage. They're not really used in this sort of model making very often, but um, I don't know, it works for me. How do I know if the audio is okay? Well, when I talk, d does the audio come up? Yeah. Okay. I don't enjoy painting as much as the other aspects of my hobby. So as a result, the only way I can sort of make things entertaining for me is to sort of just make things up as I go along and then sort of the excitement of whether it will work out after painting an entire army uh, is the only kick I sort of get now. I painted all these different shades of colors, but it's uh, only because I ran out of the right colors. So I had this lovely uh, green color, which is sort of what I guess my paint scheme would be based around, and then I quickly ran out of it. Uh, so I started using it with blue, and I uh, ran out of that. And then I went to this camo brown color. And I'm hoping it will make a nice variety when it's all put together. Uh, but in actual fact, I'm just, I don't want to go to the shop and buy more. I haven't really shared this secret before. These are watercolor pencils. And this is like dry brushing for people that like dry brushing, but hate the look of it. But like kind of like the look of it. We take our pencil and we just rub it over some of the raised edges. And this gives the illusion that we, uh, we added a bit of detail to the model. <laughs> Okay, well look, it's something. And for the main event, we're going to blast every model with a bunch of blood red. In fact, this is clear red. My um, spray paint's a bit broken, but it's kind of working, right? That's the start of something. I might regret this, but in here is some red resin and I'm going to just paint it onto these models like it's blood. Uh, and hopefully it will get all thick and goopy and... Made a bit of a mess. But it looks cool. I think so. Why cover my orcs in blood? To make this make sense uh, and look cool on the tabletop, we need a centerpiece to justify it all. Something that is like notable and exciting and ties this whole army together. Something the eye focuses on and justifies how fast and quick and simple and easy and over the top and sort of dumb the rest of the paint job of the army is. And I'm thinking a stomper. Specifically one with a lot of nipples, but in the middle, I want a pipe that is gushing down blood and then bless all the models that run between its legs. I have a new concept. A giant robot. Okay. Uh, with a sword. 
and then this hole is like a sewer pipe and this drips down and normal nipple is that duct tape well no the second well, there's no robot duct tape it's just that nipple is a, is a cross okay I'll give it a go. Thank you. So I've definitely fallen in love again with 3D printing. This is from my new terrain set uh, called the Statue of Terror. Rachel sculpted all of this based on my sketches, which is so rad. Um, this basing technique is um, I take a little bit of uh, dusty color and I just spray it on the base and you're going to get overspray. It's going to go on the feet and stuff. That's okay, because it kind of looks a bit like dust. I bring it over to this pot of base ready, <laughs> base ready mix. And because it's still kind of tacky, I can just sort of spread it on there and it will stick to the surface. There's so many diminishing returns with painting. And you know, when I'm painting armies, I'm designing the whole army to look good on the tabletop as an army. I'd rather it look like something that sort of punches you in the face with like attitude and excitement and an idea, like covering it in gloop, um, as opposed to like someone being like, wow, that's a beautiful army and picking up one model at a time and I have to pray that they're picking up the right model that looks kind of good. Um, but when you paint like this, people go, oh, that's shit, I'm not gonna bother picking it up, but um, I can tell that it looks cool. You know what you know what I mean? Okay. I did a thing for you. <laughs> All right. Nice. My only thought is now, like, I had a mouth gun initially, and I'm thinking maybe that should be bigger, and that should be like a feeding tube, so it can pick things up and put it in its mouth, and that's what it spurts out. I think the number of unpainted grey miniatures I have sort of comes from a deep insecurity I have about my hobby. And that's, I haven't really found a voice yet in my painting. All of my peers sort of have a style. A style that screams them. And I guess I just, you know, I haven't found that voice yet. And that's why all my Models are so bloody gimmicky. <laughs> you know, to paint these terrain pieces, they have very fine layer lines. And while I was visiting Melbourne a few weeks ago, I was making miniatures, my friend Viv recommended I try a textured spray paint. And this is concrete spray paint. This turned out pretty good. It's very difficult to tell that it's a 3D print after using the concrete effect. Wow. 26 hours, 17 minutes and 43 seconds. That's pretty good. There you go. Ah, he's pretty. <laughs> This is dry, concrete. Bit of gun metal, I reckon. Oh, why is it? Okay. Look, it bubbles. Weird. So it's nearly 7 a.m. now. This is finally dry. This is. Oh no. Oh no. Fuck. <laughs> Are you okay? Um, I'm playing a game at 8 a.m. And I'm thinking oil paints to paint this quickly. Fuck it, we'll just do it. Uh, brown, green, red, purple, pink, whatever. We're just gonna apply it directly onto the model because uh, we're s absolute animals. Oh yeah, nice and rusty and old and grimy looking. Bit of red, 
purple, I don't know. Um, blood splits, we need blood splits. Probably should shower too, huh? We'll work that out. I guess the strategy is we just pour it in, right? I added uh, some extra little gloop there. And also the mouth started to foam up a little bit. And that's a win. <laughs> you know, happy accidents. Okay, I'm definitely late. Let's just load up these orcs very quickly. Ugh. Let's go. Good morning. Oh, nice. oh, wow. Then this guy. It smells like fresh blood. <laughs> oh, so much red on that side of the board. I'm glad I put those little two red canisters on. Oh, as long as it stays on, on that side of the board. I am back from my game and let me tell you that Blood Gut Knuckle Dragger, my Stomper alternative, was an absolute star. I was playing Adeptus Mechanicus, I had to penetrate through a fortress wall and get a hero to the other side and he came along and he just busted down every single wall, chopped some knights in half, it was rad. It was a good game, it was really fun. This is my collection of Orc Boys, there's five squads there and each unit is led by a bloodletter with an old school orc gun. And I made a flesh truck. <laughs> you know, the orcs just sort of climb inside the flesh. Uh, so, you know, I guess my army is getting kind of crazy. 